Okay, we've seen some results on the difficulties associated with aggregating preferences uh, coherently. And what I want to do is talk a little bit about the, a, a setting where things are nicely behaved. And these are known as single peaked preferences. And you know, sometimes voters' preferences have nice properties. And um, a very prominent case of that is when candidates can actually be ordered from left to right. So we can think of leftmost candidates, rightmost candidates, and, and candidates can be nicely ordered. And in situations where people have a most preferred outcome or candidate on this spectrum, then candidates uh, are going to have nice properties in terms of existing, having an existing Condorcet winner, having nicely defined voting schemes, and, and so forth. And so the idea here is, is people have a most preferred point, and they prefer candidates closest to that and don't prefer ones that are further away. Now, um, you know, we can think of this in a political spectrum. You could also think of, you know, how much tax would you like to have? Well, people might have an optimal tax rate and, and not like to have higher tax rates or lower tax rates, or what's the uh, extent of some regulation? We can think of a series of different settings where we have a nice ordering over the alternatives and people's preferences are going to have this property. So in particular, when we think about, you know, so, so our set of outcomes, let's say our, our set of outcomes here is a, B, C, D, E, and we look at a person who has single peak preferences, we look at, um, say, the utility. So uh, here, the utility, the payoff they get from a given alternative, and their most preferred alternative in this case is B. They get the highest. And then when we look at the other alternatives, in this case, C would be second highest, A would be third highest, then D and then E is way down here. So their preferences would look like B, C, A, D, E in terms of a ranking. But what's important in terms of single peakedness is that the further you move this way, the lower the preferences, the, the lower the utility is. So the, the voter always prefers something which is closer to B than something further away on the same side. And similarly, the more you move in this direction, the voter prefers the alternative B to A or anything further to the um, left uh, of A. So that's what's known as a single peaked preference. And the fact that you've got this nice ordering and it can be ordered on a, on a line with a most preferred alternative and things getting worse when you move away, um, that kind of preference means that you've got nice voting procedures and the existence of Condorcet winners. So let's have a peek at that. Um, just understand why things are going to be better behaved in this kind of world. So imagine we had three voters that have single peaked preferences and we had our A, B, C, D, E. So we'll keep an odd number of voters to make sure we don't have to worry about ties. Um, what's true then is if we look at the median most preferred outcome, that's going to be a Condorcet winner. So in this case, that's B. So B's most preferred by this middle person. So let's call this person one, person two, person three. Person three's most preferred alternative is D. Person one's most preferred alternative is A. And let's verify that this outcome B is actually going to beat everything in a pairwise comparison. So suppose we compare B to C. Well, both persons one and two like B better than C. They also like it better than D and E, right? So given the fact that we've got, we look at the, when we look at the median voters, all the voters to the left of the median are going to prefer the median's peak to any alternative which lies to the right, because going to the right further to the right is bad. And similarly, we're going to have a majority of people on the right preferring the median's alternative to anything that's to the left of the, the median's alternative. The, the median's most preferred alternative. So the median outcome here, median outcome is um, a Condorcet winner. Median, um, meaning median peak here. Right, so we look at the peak, we look at the median of the peaks, that's a Condorcet winner. And so we're gonna have a well-defined alternative which is gonna beat every other one. And this gives us a, a nice way of choosing an alternative um, it's known as median voting, and it gives us an idea of why we always talk about median voters and so forth, because then we've got a majority that prefers that position to anything on the other side and, and vice versa. We have a Condorcet winner. Moreover, 
um, this is going to have nice properties in terms of people misrepresenting their preferences, right? So could two improve by, by changing their ordering? No, their, their alternative is picked, right? B, their favorite ordering. Um, let's think about person A. Um, how could you affect this by, by, if you're median voting, we're picking the median of the three alternatives. So if we think about picking the median alternative of these three alternatives, then the only way that person one could affect the outcome would be um, to change the median. How could they change the median? They would have to announce a peak over here, C, D, or E. And all of those alternatives are worse than B. So there's, by, by misrepresenting their preferences, this person, person one, would actually do worse. So this is, and you can verify that that's also two for three or, or any individual. The only way you're gonna be able to make a difference is to change the median, which means you have to flip to the other side, which is something you're generally not gonna to wanna to do. So nice thing about uh, single peak preference worlds, median um, most preferred point is a Condorcet winner and individuals are gonna have incentives to be truthful and to announce their preferences um, in, in a truthful manner. In fact, it's gonna be a dominant strategy if we ask people for their preferences to announce their truthful preference if we're uh, using majority voting, I'm sorry, median voting in this case. So there are settings where a lot of the negative results of impossibilities of aggregating preferences are overturned. And those are gonna be ones where we've got a lot of structure on the problem, and that structure of the problem means we have nice orderings and there's no voting cycles. So this kind of setting, there's no voting cycles. We don't have the difficulties that underlie um, some of the issues like Arrow's theorem and so forth. Once we go into this setting, we have a nicer set of of preferences in terms of the restrictions that they satisfy, and that allows us to aggregate preferences in ways that are going to be nicely efficient, strategy-proof, uh, you know, having dominant strategies, and, and so forth. So there are settings which are quite natural where things are going to work out more, more effectively than they do when we allow for all preference orderings over alternatives. Now, when that happens depends on the setting, and, and there can be situations where you don't have this nice left-right ordering. So it is a fairly restrictive setting, but one that at least captures a good uh, number of applications.